All right, before we start today's video, we've got our brothers from Kolkata first of all who have come out with their new single Mephisto. It is one hell of a song, great groove, great melody, no BS, balls to the wall metal and some truly awesome vocals by Ravi Datta. Done a cover with him as well. You know, you can check it out. And if you haven't heard this song yet, it's linked in the description. Go ahead, give it a listen, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to them and support your metal scene, man. Make an in India. Let's go. What's up guys? Welcome back to Tuck TV. Now, one thing we've done a lot on this channel is review VSTs. We're going to be doing that today. Definitely a VST because, you know, a lot of us are still in lockdown. We don't really want to spend a lot of money now, do we? And uh, so, yeah, it's a VST, but it isn't an amp sim. So it's not, you know, something that is just emulating the sound of an amp. Neither is it something like a compressor or an equalizer. What this is, is a bit of both. It's for my bassy dudes out here. And what we're looking at is a VST, which takes the DI of your bass and goes ahead and enhances it. All right, so what you're seeing is the VST that we're going to check out. This is the Bass Professor Mark II. It is by Sonic Anomaly. It is completely free. And as you can see, it's not your conventional VST. Yet at the same time, a relatively simple to use UI. We're going to talk about it in detail. And to use this, I'm going to be playing, you know, an old sort of original composition that I've done. So firstly, there are mistakes in this. Don't judge me for it. But as we go, we're going to understand, you know, some of the impacts that this has on the mistakes and you know on the overall tone and as i mentioned to you if you're somebody who has a, like an entry-level base you ain't got the budget yet to go you know for a full robust new one it isn't giving you the tone that you're looking for or it just has one specific type of tone and like me you're a bassy who wants to play more than one genre or style of music and you need a little more enhancement this is what you're going to be looking for as mentioned completely free it's linked in the description download it and use it. I think it's really, really amazing. I'm going to see what this sounds like. So before I get into it, uh, one thing I want to make clear that the DI you're listening to in this is a bass I no longer have. This was the Cord Action B5 Plus. And the reason I want to use that is because that was sort of an entry level bass. So we want to see how this would go ahead and enhance, you know, the effects of that. So let's first hear what it sounds like. Before that, I have to go ahead and put on headphones. I'll be back. Headphones are on. And uh, Let's first hear what my DI sounds like. Okay, so that's what this thing sounded like. I am now going to turn on the bass professor. And just to talk a little bit about what this VST offers to start off with the channel can go mono or stereo depending on what you want. Transients are basically the impact and effects of everything that you do. I'd recommend keeping it on. Even if you keep it off, it does go ahead and make changes, but they're not as amped up as with them on. And then finally, of course, you have an input trim because maybe after you're done with everything, you either want to bump up or bump down the overall sort of sound of it. So you can either increase it by six or decrease it by six or leave it in the middle. So I'm going to turn everything down. I'm going to keep the output, which is straightforward, you know, in case after everything you want to bump it up, you can do that there. Or if your drummer is Lars Ulrich, you can do these pathetic things. So this is on. Let's see the impact it makes. You can almost immediately see that it starts registering on the equalizer over here. One thing I like about this input trim is it's very, very subtle. And that kind of makes sense because if you want to make drastic changes, you've got the output over here and you know, you've got your main fader as well, which you can go ahead and change and a whole lot of difference is going to come in. Anyway, moving forward, we then have dirt. And what that does is add a little lemmy to your tone. Next up, you have the three frequencies on the bass end. So you've got the sub bass in case you want a little bit of boost. What did I just say? The sub bass in case you want a little bit of boom on your bass. You have the low bass. This is the frequency that I personally like because it gives you the elements of the bass, but it's not like too roomy or boomy. And then of course, the high bass in case you want to add a little more definition into it. So let's play around. So 
so that's what it does and you know what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to sort of uh turn it on and off in the mix let's see how much of a difference it's already made so first just the di then i'm going to turn this on and let's hear it so i mean as you heard you heard like lazulric versions and normal musician versions of the same thing and you know i haven't done much but you can already hear that it's making a world of difference to the bass in the mix itself let's go back into solo mode next up you have the fullness what that kind of does is it works like a compressor you might not want to dial it all the way up because it tends to get a little muddy but hey you can go ahead and work with it depending on the kind of music that you're playing so here we go Next up you have something called artic and that is short for articulation this is important because what articulation does is if you are someone who's playing a lot of intricate bass lines and you want to show off you know the note work that you're doing articulation will go ahead and express those notes accordingly now you remember I was talking to you about mistakes what articulation will also do is if you've got a few bum notes or if you got mistakes it will also sound those off like you're going to hear now Yeah the little bum note that I hit that is also going to go ahead and sound off with articulation. You might also want to decide how you're going to control the articulation especially if you're playing with a pick because generally when you're playing with a pick the notes are articulated differently they are you know hit with a particular pluck trim so the sound is very very different and generally is on the ringier side so you might want to figure out how you want to play with that. In my case for this particular song it works because I want a little bit of that gnarliness and I want you know that ring to really come in. Next up we have presence. Presence is essentially going to either space your notes out your bass out or it's going to bring it together and with that you can decide how far up and down you want it in the mix it sort of puts it in the front the back then of course treble because in case you want you can go ahead and bump up the treble as well. If you're using an entry level bass you might want to watch out for that so you know the action v5 plus did not have the greatest of pickups so when you turn up the treble and sometimes the presence you are going to get a lot of hiss then of course you've got a low frequency cut and what that is going to do is in case it's getting too roomy in the mix if everything's booming you want to just sort of roll it off kind of works like a high pass and then finally of course output so that's what this is very very simple to use vst you can see i haven't had to meddle around a lot uh, and you don't have to know an awful lot about mixing and mastering you just sort of work with it until you get the tones throw it into the mix you can see what it sounds like so i'm going to turn this on and then off and let's see how it's changing the mix And there you have it incredibly simple for you to go ahead and use it's amazing that it is free i mean this is such a robust you know vst that you can use and what i like best about it is you are getting to use the tonality of your bass so if you've got a type of unique sound coming from the wood you're retaining that because this more or less is di it's not like you're layering it with another sort of amp simulation and then pushing out the sound of the amp this is the sound of your bass 
So you can bring that forward and then you can sort of work with it if you want nice and gnarly tones, if you want deep tones, you can do all of this here. And what this allows you to also do is you can work with it post because sometimes even if you have the equalizer on your bass, what happens is you might set it to something, record and then realize you didn't want that, you wanted something else, a different type of tone, maybe you wanted a little more treble, which you didn't do while you were recording. With this, what happens is you can keep your equalizer flat while you are going ahead and recording your bass and then you can work out the kind of tones that you want in post. So, you know, with that, it's a great thing to have. And yeah, with that, I come to the end of this video. What did you think about the bass Professor Mark II? Would you want to get it? If you wouldn't get it, I'd really want to know why, because it's free. What stops you from getting it and using it? But hey, anyway, those are my thoughts on this. And uh, yeah, this was actually recommended to me on another video that we had done again on free bass VSTs. Uh, thank you again for recommending me this and I really, really like it. All right, folks, with that, I come to the end of another episode on Tuck TV. If this is the first time you're on our channel, you know the drill, like, subscribe, please help us get to 5,000 subscribers. Really, really nothing like it if we can. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next one. Watch some of these other videos till then.